Alrighty guys and welcome back this week we're going to be taking another look at the shrine and I can see we have no mither which is a or no mither which is a David King perk we have save the best for last which is a Michael Myers perk followed by life which is also an amazing perk by Feng Min and then we have lightborn which is a hillbilly perk unlocked at level 35. All right now what is so good about this week's shrine? Almost nothing, but we'll get into exclusive detail right now. Right, what does No Mither do? No mi No Mither, No Mither, makes you start the trial unbroken status. This means you will go down in one hit rather than two hits. Now, you might be thinking that is a severe disadvantage. Yes, now it does come with some pros and some cons. No, it does not come with additional blood points when you use this. However, you will leave no blood trail because you're injured. Therefore, perks like Sloppy Butcher do not affect you at all. No Ed will still one hit you because you're in, um, un you're hurt, you're, even if you're on full health, uh, the thing is it doesn't count in Noed due to the fact that Noed gives you 4% movement speed as well. Now, why would you want to run this perk? It makes you grunt 50% quieter, so it doesn't give you the equivalent of Iron Will. However, there are other perks that can benefit from running No Mither, such as Resilience. Resilience allows you to work on everything 9% quicker. Now, for mathematical reasons, I'm going to round that 9% up to 10%. It takes 80 seconds to do a generator. Just by having No Mither and Resilience, you have the equivalent of a permanent toolbox, permanent brown toolbox. You're now going to be working 8 seconds faster off that generator, putting it on 72 seconds. However, if there are multiple people on a generator, you will suffer from diminishing returns as well. Keep in mind when there's more than one player on a generator, two people for say, there is a 10% penalty counted by prove theirself. Three people, there's a 20% penalty. And then four people, there is a 30% penalty. If multiple people are running prove thyself, it does not give you a benefit for there. However, prove thyself will stack with resilience, which will also stack with the God tier toolbox. So if we're going to talk about an engineering toolbox here, which is already 20% faster on gens, you chuck on the socket swivel to make it 25% quicker. You run uh, resilience to make that, wait, you're 25, you're 34% quicker, and then you're in prove thyself range, you're, f what, 41 percent quicker, you're going to be working on a generator in almost half the time. This is providing you don't land great skill checks. If you're landing great skill checks, you'll be getting the Jenny done in no time. If there are multiple people on it, you've just cut a Jenny down from 55 seconds. If there's two people on it with prove thyself to 50, and now you're just going to slice those numbers up like butter. Before you know it, the Jen will be done in about 36 seconds, and that's if he doesn't have a toolbox. So you can actually get a really strong Jen rushing build. Now, if your whole team runs no mither, you're all injured. So giving yourself the equivalent of running uh, empathy, allowing you to see your allies while they're hurt throughout the entire board, 128 meters, that's going to be really good for you to be able to know where they are. It also allows you to recover from dying states. If the killer hits you and leaves you on the ground, you can recover like Unbreakable without the benefit time that Unbreakable saves of about 2.5 seconds, so you can get right back up and keep running. But generally, when you have no mither, you'll be tunneled, you'll be um, killed, and the killer will always focus on you because you are essentially the weakest link. If you are running no mither, I do recommend you run dead hard as well, as if you make a mistake, you're going to be able to make a recovery from that mistake too. Um, pointing out some other things is if I were to be running a no mither build, I'd be running prove thyself, I'd be running no mither, I'd be running resilience, and I'd be running dead hard. Now, they are subject to change. If I thought I was versing a spirit, I don't want to cry at 50%. I take off prove thyself and I put on iron will. You can, however, run this is not happening, which is going to make all your skill checks 30% bigger if you are struggling to land skill checks. It is a David King perk unlocked at level 40. I do not really recommend it unless you're trying to challenge yourself. It can be very hard to use, but at the same time, very rewarding and a good feeling. You don't have to worry about healing the whole trial, which is going to get you into the habit of doing generators, which is going to speed up the game, hopefully in your favor majority of the cases. Moving on to the next perk. Now, this is called Save the Best for Last. Now, Save the Best for Last has had a quite an adventurous journey, this perk, through its entire DVD existence. I'm talking, Save the Best for Last could have wrote a book. You used to be able to run, used to be able to run, Save the Best for Last and Unrelenting, and then become a machine gun. It was called the machine gun build, and everyone would run it on the trapper. This is going back years ago. You can't do it anymore. Then, Save the Best for Last got a bit of a rework as well, so did Unrelenting. Now, Save the Best for Last, whenever you hit somebody who isn't your obsession, you get a 5% faster recovery rate onto your next swing. You can have up to 8 tokens, um, each token stacks an additional 5%, therefore you can have 40% recovery time. However, when you hit your obsession, you lose 4 stacks, 
three stacks, and then two stacks, depending on you have the perk tier one, tier two, or tier three. So at tier three, you'll lose two stacks when you hit your obsession. Now, you might be like, that's still okay, just don't hit your obsession. You can literally lunge and hit somebody, and if you don't have enduring, and then you can walk up and hit them. But a lot of the times when you lunge hit somebody, you're going to be lunge hitting them through a pallet, so you're going to most likely recover from enduring, or the pallet's done anyways, therefore it's not that valuable. Used to be an absolute demon perk on the clown, because the clown would hit you with a bottle, reduce your movement speed by 15%, hit you in the back with the, the knife, or if he had the glass of bleach, reduce you by 20%, your 150% movement speed for 2 seconds becomes 130% for 2 seconds, and he gets to recover really, really fast, 40% quicker, and move at 115%, he'll catch you in no time. However, Save the Best for Last isn't all fun and games anymore. Now that almost every survivor runs DS, because it's not affected by uh, enduring, and it lasts a 5 second stun, if everyone in the trial has DS, and you manage to eat all of them, that's 20 seconds of standing stationary doing nothing. Think about how long that is. Now, I'm not saying... I know people will turn around and go, oh, just don't tunnel. But remember, it lasts one minute. I can already down somebody and hook somebody else in that time that I find somebody again, especially if I have an instant injury. So it lasts a really long time. Makes un uh, makes borrowed time really easy to save people from the basement and multiple hooks with deliverance as well. So if you want to run the really, really strong build, you're looking at deliverance, you're looking at dead hard, borrowed time, and DS. You can obviously trade out deliverance for adrenaline, but I would not recommend fiddling anything else there. You have a perfect build uh, and you're going to be a weapon in almost every single situation, but it's going to be very hard to verse. You could obviously run, you know, things like instant heals, which would be disgusting. I don't touch it with a 10-foot pole unless I find them in-game with plunderers, so pog champ. But uh, moving back on to save the best for last. Now, when you down a guy, if you pick him up and he DSs you, he becomes the obsession. So if you down him again, you lose the stacks of the tokens you got for getting him in the first place, putting you back to square one. It is very easy to lose stacks of Save the Best for Last. If people know you have Save the Best for Last, they will block you, like body block you, and force you to M1 them to get rid of the stacks if they are the obsession. It could be very devastating. Um, personally, I used to recommend it on my Trapper as well. I would personally trade it out for Sloppy Butcher or Make Your Choice. However, my Trapper build right now is Ruin, Corrupt Intervention, Thrilling Tremor, and Pop Goes the Weasel. Yeah, it's that big. Alright, moving on to the next perk, guys. We have Life. Now... Life is an okay perk. Um, I'm not going to try and sell you on how great it is. It is just like any exhaustion perk. It has a 60 second cooldown, 50, and then 40 second cooldown, whether you have it tier 1, tier 2, or tier 3. However, the good thing about life is it can now be used outside of chase. A big factor of life that really hurt people was you needed to be in chase to be able to use it, the kill look of my game, and hit you. Now, I would not personally run this over balanced landing. I reckon balanced landing's better, and I reckon dead hard's better than both of them, especially with all the new unsafe pallets that they're releasing um, in Dead by Daylight, like on the new Bad Hands lap. Bad Hands? Badlands? You know, the one with the preschool. Um, okay, so why would you run Life? Now, Life works decently with Dance With Me. It works decently with Quick and Quiet, and it works with Iron Will. It works with Lightweight. So basically, when you vault a window with Life, Fast Vault, so you're holding Shift and Spacebar, and you're coming at a 45, well, a straight angle for about a meter and a half, two meters. You will go through the window, and you'll run at 150% movement speed, as if you were hit with a three seconds... So you're going to be going and covering a lot of distance. Now, if you were to be running that with Dance With Me and Quick and Quiet, Quick and Quiet removes the sound you make while going through a window, but... A good survive, a good killer will be able to hear you because it removes the clicking of your feet, but it doesn't remove the gasp of air. A survivor like Feng Min will still go <gasps> when she's fast vaulting into a locker or through a window, and a killer being able to hear that and understanding that he heard wooden floorboards and then <gasps> means she either jumped into a locker if she was upstairs or if she's downstairs, which you heard you can pinpoint direction well with 7.1 surround sound, you're going to be able to go, okay, he was downstairs, he went through the outside window, then you walk around the corner. If he had danced with me for the equivalent time of the, um, it's for three seconds that no scratches are left. So she should be running, paying attention to the haste icon in the bottom right-hand corner, and then she should crouch and then try and disappear. It works well with urban evasion as well. But keep in mind, I'm talking about running life, dance with me, Iron Will, personally, I'd say that, and then Quick and Quiet, as opposed to you wouldn't have room for Urban Evasion, but now you've just put your entire build into one play. What happens if you're on a bad map where you can't lose the killer? You have nothing to defend yourself. No perks, no Iron Will, no DS, no borrowed time to assist your team, no Adrenaline if you're getting tunneled at the end, so you're sacrificing a lot for that kind of build. Life is kind of easy to mind game out of a lot of plays on a lot of the jungle gyms. Now, there are a few windows where a killer can't do anything unless he has bamboozled, uh, but 
that being said, I honestly don't think it is a fantastic perk because people are going to be able to hide their light and then walk around the corner and when you fast vault, they'll be able to lunge hit you through a window and now you've wasted life and you've been hit and you don't have dead hard to defend yourself and you can't recover from falling down a hill as well. So these things can really hurt you and put you in a very interesting spot. Personally, life is an okay perk. If I had to take any teachable from Feng Min, I would take alert. Life is a level 35 teachable that can be unlocked as well. If you don't own the DLCs, I would pick it up for a little bit of fun to change now and then. Moving on to the next perk, Lightborn. Now, what does Lightborn do? Lightborn allows you to recover from a flashlight blind or a firecracker blind and have more resistance to it in the first place. Now, a firecracker is guaranteed to blind you whether you have lightweight or you don't have lightweight. It'll just pop up and it will make it happen on you regardless. So where you could be trying to do a breaking your pallet, trying to pick a survivor up. If somebody drops a flash, uh, drops a flashlight, drops a firecracker, it'll guarantee blind you, right? Your play there is to look up and turn to the left or turn behind or if you're picking up a survivor and he mistimes it spin your camera around and look up always look up a lot of people say looking up is the wrong idea when a firecracker blinds you it blinds from in front of you it doesn't blind from above you even though the firecracker goes into the air um, something to know about flashlights as well to avoid a flashlight you can either look down or you can look up a lot of people go for the uh, looking down strat I personally look up and I just use sound now I love versing four survivors with flashlights. I never bring Franklin's Demise and I never bring Lightborn because uh, a flashlight means altruism. Altruism means not a lot of work's being done or at least one player's unaccounted for. If you down somebody in between a pallet, stand on top of them, turn away, listen, wait a second, look down, and then turn up and look. Have a look around, see if anyone came out of hiding because you've got to be really close now to try and get a flashlight save. And if somebody did, lunge, get a free hit on them, change target, two people are mobilized, somebody else has to come for the save while another guy does a Jenny, meaning one person can possibly be doing work right now. If you get a hit and he sprint bursts in the opposite direction due to the fact you hit him for 150% moving speed for a few seconds, just turn around and pick the guy up. It's fine. If you think you hear someone coming behind you, you're not going to be able to get out of the pallet in time, just swing. Just swing behind you, try and take a free hit with it as well. Um... I do think Lightborn's a wasted perk. I would rather hit a survivor, let him blind me at every pallet, and use my ears to track him. Now, even if he doesn't have Iron Will, I'd be able to track him a lot easier, but if he does have Iron Will, listen for his movement. Is he running through grass? Is he running through tiles? Is he running through concrete, wooden floorboards? What do you hear? Just because he doesn't cry doesn't mean he's not making noise, yeah? Just remember this, but you also make noise too, especially when you walk through grass. The grass sound delay is kind of bad on killers at this point in time. You walk through grass and about 0.5 to 0.8 of a second later, you'll hear grass. So sometimes it'll confuse a killer and go, wow, somebody's behind me. Somebody's waiting behind that tree. Do you know what I mean? And you look like an absolute clown to them. Um, alrighty guys, so that's going to be all this week for the shrine. If you have any questions about DVD or you want to go, want to learn a little bit more. If you think you know everything, don't, he don't hesitate to head over to my uh, Twitch channel and uh, check it out guys to see if, uh, maybe if you think you know everything, you can help me teach the people that don't. So guys, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video in the next shrine.